We have here a multiplicative story because the revenues are the product of price times quantity. And it looks like we're comparing two newspapers A to B. So I'm going to start by building some ratios for A to B. We'll go one by one. There's the price of A to the price of B. There's the quantity of A to the quantity of B. And there's the revenues from A to the revenues from B. And we know that the latter should be the product of the first two because of this multiplicative relationship. So for the price of A to B, that's 1 to 1.25, but we don't like decimals in our ratios, so let's just expand that by a factor of 4. So the ratio of the prices is 4 to 5. Now, this next part is a bit tricky. They tell us that P percent of the total number of newspapers were newspaper A. So if P was, say, 30, if 30% 30 came from A, then what percent would have come from B? 70%. How did I get 70? I subtracted 30 from 100. Okay, so using P, if P percent came from A, then 100 minus P must have come from B. So that's our ratio for the quantity. A to B is P to 100 minus P. Similarly, for the revenues, if R percent came from A, that leaves 100 minus R percent to have come from B. So the ratio of the revenues A to B is R to 100 minus R. So now we can set up this equation where the product of the first two ratios is equal to the third ratio, the ratio of the revenues. And the question is asking us to solve this equation for R and whatever we get, that should be the correct answer. So I think we should probably simplify the equation a little bit. Let's start by multiplying the two terms on the left side. So you'd have 4p over 500 minus 5p, and that equals r over 100 minus r. Now, I don't really feel like solving this any further. I, I feel like it's not really an appropriate thing to do in the GMAT. And if I glance at the answer choices, there is one answer that really jumps out at me already at this point, just kind of playing the movie ahead in my mind of, of what the simplification would look like. Answer choice D really is calling out to me, and I probably would just pick it and move on if I were at the test center. For our purposes, let's just finish off the algebra here just to make sure that we know how to do that. Since I'm trying to solve for r, I want to make sure that all of my r's, anything that has r in it, is all on the same side, and anything that doesn't have r in it is on the other side of the equal sign. But first, we should probably expand the equation by the denominators because nobody likes fractions in their equations. So if I'm multiplying both sides by 500 minus 5p, and I'm also multiplying both sides by 100 minus r, on the left-hand side, I end up with 400p minus 4pr, and on the right-hand side, I end up with 500r minus 5rp. Now, since I want to have all the r's on the same side, I'll add 4pr to both sides, and then I'll have 400p equals 500r minus rp. The next step would be to pull out the r as a common factor, again, because that's the thing we're trying to solve for. So you'd have 400p equals r, parentheses, 500 minus p. And the next step after that would be to just divide both sides by 500 minus p. But at that point, you should already be able to see that that's exactly what the correct answer, answer choice d, looks like. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.